Hello there, good afternoon. You're tuned in to Hot Issues on TV3. I am Nuong Falong. Ghanaian football is emerging from turbulence, from the exit of the old administration in the midst of scandal through a normalization committee and the election of a new GFA president. Has Ghana learned from her mistakes? Is this the future? Well, who better to answer these questions than the newly elected Ghana Football Association President, Kurt Okreku. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Mr. Okreku. Good afternoon. Welcome to Hot Issues. Thank you very much. You're just coming out of an election. How did it go? Well, I think that it was a, a very tough process. It was quite stressful. What made it um, tough? Um, of course, it was the first time we were all competing at that level. Um, the aspirants were six at that time. Um, we had a, um, a delegate size of 120 uh, spread across the length and breadth of the country. So what that meant was that you need to go everywhere to ensure that you speak to everybody, um, club owners, executives, CEOs, all the stakeholders, all in the industry. So it was quite stressful. Um, but at the end of the day, I think that um, the people spoke and they spoke pretty well. When you say you had to travel the length and breadth of the country, speak to delegates, uh, a lot of people have concerns that elections in Ghana uh, include bribing delegates. Did you encounter anything like that? Well, I don't know exactly what, uh, what that is meant. Um, Did you have to part uh, with money to convince any one of them? Um, there were one, one or two situations where people couldn't afford transport to, to come over. So once they are, they are here or they have to travel, because of you, you have to help them to travel. Do you have to go to anyone and say, "I'm going to give you this I didn't, amount of I didn't, money"? I didn't. I didn't give. I didn't give Wachi anyway. Anyway. You uh, didn't give Wachi. No, I didn't give did Wachi. Did you exchange gifts for votes? No, my my sweet face did a lot. The trick. Oh, you believe you have a sweet face? Yeah, I do. I see. You had a meeting with the president yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was uh, supposedly uh, a private invite um, to say hello. Um, I think it went well. That was my first encounter directly with him. And uh, I came out of the engagement feeling very good. I hope you didn't put him in your pocket. <laughs> no, 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 not at all, not at all. Um, I think that we, we, we had a real opportunity to know each other and uh, that will be the beginning of uh, perhaps a long relationship. Let's tackle an interesting subject. Some people say Ghana football is plagued with something they call the Nyante Cheese Syndrome, um, which includes what they call chop chop and things like that. What do you think about Ghana? Well, football? I don't know about uh, Nyante Cheese Syndrome or Nyante Cheese, blah, 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 blah. Um, I think that we all have to come to the reality of, of, of life. The reality is that our game has suffered a lot by way of image, by way of perception. The reality is that there's a need for us as new leaders to roll out the right policies aimed at repositioning the product offering. So you do agree the image of Ghana football has been damaged? Yes, it, it has been tainted. Um, it is a huge challenge. Uh, there is a good reason why the direct consumers of our sport are, low, not, are no longer con consuming what we offer. Um, there's a reason why we've lost our funds. There's a reason why corporate Ghana is not giving us uh, maximum attention. Um, so clearly we have a challenge on hand and we have to deliver on our promise. Is there a plan to court this attention from corporate Ghana? I, I think that generally uh, from the way we all behaved uh, in the period leading to the election speaks volumes of what the future holds. Okay. Um, we came out to launch uh, our manifesto, mm -hmm. uh, which was done in a very good way, quality way. We showed that there are quality people in the industry. We showed that we have, we have people who can manage the sport, uh, following which all the other aspirants also did the same. Uh, beyond that, we did what we call the, the debate, um, which was also one of the key strategies by the Football Association to sell ourselves to, to not only Ghanaians, uh, the corporate world, but perhaps people beyond the shores of Ghana. And I think that it was, it was really, really an interesting um, exercise and experience. Um, beyond which uh, we are now in the saddle. Clearly, our desire is to bring back the love. Our desire is to ignite passion. 
our desire is to create wealth for everybody. And I'm sure in the next few days and weeks, we will come out clearly as to how we want to navigate the industry to the promised land. How do you intend to regulate things like talent production, both the academy level and the cult level? Well, I think that um, when, when you are into the business of football, uh, you must clearly understand that the production cycle starts from the scratch um, up to the, the, the end product where we see our senior most national teams, i.e. women and, and men, playing or representing our country. Um, Colts football is also important. Uh, I have said on numerous platforms that if you want to build the tallest high riser in the city of, let's say, Timbuktu, if the foundation is weak, um, the, the, the high rises will definitely go down. Okay? We are looking at giving juvenile football maximum attention. And when I speak about juvenile football, I'm talking about our conventional system and the new ones. Uh, the new ones here means they are academies, okay? There's a need for, for, for blend. I mean, with the advent of free SHS, a lot more kids have access to education, for which reason we cannot sit down aloof and allow their talents to go away. So there's a need for, for a blend. And we would be doing that uh, in, in close relationship with the Ghana Education Service. How will you tackle the issue of match fixing through betting, which um, derails fairness in the game? I think that first is to admit that there is a clear danger. Um, secondly, it's important that we engage stakeholders, including the Gaming Commission. Um, it's also important for us to accept that betting uh, um, companies have become a big revenue, uh, so to say, stream, okay, and for, for our industry, not only in Ghana, beyond the shores of Ghana, for which reason we have to engage and really, really engage properly. Yeah, but where it interrupts uh, with fairness. Uh, um, I think that in, in, the more in the more established jurisdictions, uh, they've been able to streamline the activities of, of these betting companies and to harness the potential it brings on, on, into the industry, and we'll do the same. Some players uh, mentioned being disgruntled with the player selection uh, mode for Ghana football. How do you intend to ensure that the right players, the most talented players, get a chance to play at the national level? I think there is a need for us to look at this issue broadly, in very broad terms. First is, is to look at the production cycle to ensure that we are even producing quality players. Mm -hmm. Most importantly, we have promised to set up a fully functional tanker directorate. One of the key responsibilities will be a unit responsible for scouting, okay? Um, and this will be, this would ensure that players who would not normally be noticed from the wolves of the country would have the opportunities, okay? Um, it is very clear that if we want to, again, reach the target of envy, we have to be honest with ourselves. We have to ensure that the bases are right. It's not possible for us to have good and quality national teams when our scouting department is work. Right, so you, you, in your campaign, you mentioned, uh, you promised transparency, accountability, annual auditing. How are you going to ensure this? <laughs> I think I've, I've spoken about it. Um, we will intend to set up, or we will set up an efficient secretariat um, with um, the basic or good corporate governance basics um, principles at its apex. What I have said that is that um, we will set up a compliance department that will bring everybody in line. We have said that we will set up a good internal audit system to ensure that we all behave well. At the last Congress, we, we took a major decision, and that was to ensure that our books are audited by one of the top four auditing firms um, um, in the world. Okay, so I think these are practical ways of ensuring that we all behave in court very well, and to ensure that our, our, our image will be corrected, to ensure that the, our product offering will be repositioned and to be attractive not only to our direct consumers but also uh, to the corporate world and Ghanaians in la at large. Uh, when you talk about coming out of old practices that we didn't do right, you remember when we airlifted three million Ghana <laughs> cities, uh, three million dollars to pay appearance fees for the Black Stars. Do you want to comment on this? I think that uh, fortunately the, the, the entire country has, has come through this uh, um, situation. 
um, that situation has been stopped. Players uh, are not paid uh, in that way or by, by that format anymore. Um, we've come into office at a time that there seemed to be a lot of goodwill and uh, we, we intend to engage uh, the government uh, on various fronts to ensure that ills that we, we believed existed in, in our system, in our daily operations are never repeated. If you were the GFA president, would we have airlifted that amount of money? I can't APS? speak. To, I can't speak to that uh, because Why not? Uh, because uh, I am not privy to the internal happenings. Uh, I am not privy to the circumstances that led to such a decision being taken at the highest level of, of government. So Do I can't speak to that. You think it was the best decision? I can't speak to that. Right. Let's look at women's football. Fantastic. How do you intend to ensure that there's a I, lot more attention on women's football? I will only answer that question if you promise that you're going to be a player. Oh, if I play on the football team. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of training will have to go into that, but I, but I can try. Okay, I mean, um, I think one of the key areas that I have preached about has to do with the need for us to give the ladies game a lot more attention. Mm. Okay, FIFA in themselves... Uh, intend to e eject more uh, um, resources into into the game. They 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 are looking at promoting uh, a lot more women into various bits of the industry, be it in form of players, administrators, referees, coaches, medics, etc. etc. And that is the clear intention of of my administration. Um, I have said on various platforms that. We will want to support the ladies' game with the, with, with, with the provision of basic uh, logistical support, i.e. footballs, i.e. boots, i.e. registration of players on national health insurance, i.e. ensuring that the women have free access to their registration cards and ensuring that the women play on properly approved Premier League and Division One. Uh, pitches, okay, and i.e. ensuring that the training pitches of the of the women games are improved or enhanced by 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 our good selves. So clearly, um, we are going to give the women's game a lot of attention. Most importantly, we intend to set up what we call the central fund, mm. where resources from the central fund can be assessed by the women's league board. Let's talk about remuneration, which plays a huge role in equalizing the playing field. Are you going to push for equal pay between female football players and male football we, players? We have been speaking about uh, equity, okay? And equity runs through all the policies that we intend to run. It's important that all footballers, every stakeholder that works in the industry, receives the needed um, financial reward or, so to say, incentive. Um, you think women fortunately, players fortunately, deserve the for, same pay as male players? I've been speaking about equity, okay? And fortunately for us, we, we have identified reliable revenue streams that would ensure that a lot more money can be assessed by, by, the, by the women's game. One is from the FIFA Forward program. Um, and here we want to ensure that monies that are supposed to go into the ladies game indeed are utilized and assessed by the, by the women's game. Um, the central fund is one. So clearly, the ladies game will have more resources to ensure that their players are happy. The ladies game will have more resources. But I, if I am a female football player, should I be looking forward to equal pay? You should be looking forward to enhanced uh, um, um, package in total. Enhanced package, which means it, I could, it could because be up I, I can, for what I, I can, have now. I can, I, can, I can say for a fact that um, female footballers are not paid at the moment uh, by their clubs. Um, they do receive various degrees of support, but we want to ensure that they receive exactly what they deserve. You want to ensure they receive support? Can they count on you for equal pay? Yeah, it's a promise that I've made not in my bedroom, unfortunately, but uh, in public. So uh, when we speak about gender and equity, this is one of the of, So of women's the lines. football is getting equal pay. Fantastic. I didn't uh, say equal here. Don't put the words in my mouth. You're talking, you've equity. talked about equity. Uh, yes, exactly. Fairness. So they deserve, and they would exactly field. get what they deserve. And, and, and perhaps... You think they perhaps, deserve perhaps, equal to perhaps, their male counterparts? There's never been any administration that has promised so much to the women's game in totality. Women footballers never had football boots. They struggled. 
Yes. This is money. I okay? understand you. They didn't have football boots. Okay. Free from the okay. from the football association. This is money. They were never registered on national health insurance. This is money. This is a lot of money to the women's game. They used to pay for officiating, okay, um, for the registration cards. This, they are going to get the services for free. This is a lot of money from the football association under my tenure. If I heard you correctly, you said you will ensure that women's football gets what it deserves. Equity. Does it deserve equal pay? They deserve equity. Right. So what do you think is the reason for the dwindling interest in women's football? Well, I think that I would not want to believe that uh, the interest has been dwindling. I rather believe that it's not gotten to the level it deserves. Okay. Um, I remember what is in, the level it deserves? I remember in 1999 when the, our women's national team, when our women's national team went to the Mundial in the U.S., um, that was the first time the, the sport received um, attention. Okay. Beyond that, the game has been developing on quite a slow pace because of uh, lack of, uh, so to say, um, lack of infrastructure, infrastructure, lack of basic logical support, lack of uh, resources in general. Okay. Now we, we, we are in an era where they're going to receive attention. So clearly, um, we believe that with the policies that we're going to run out with the Ghana Education Service, we're going to produce a lot more talent. Um, our national teams would improve. The Women's League would improve, both Premier and Division One. And, and clearly, interest levels in the sport, especially if people like you would take an interest and, and to preach their gospel, why not? It will receive the needed attention they deserve. Thank you very much, Kurt. We'll go for a quick commercial break. You're listening to Hot Issues. You're speaking, we are speaking with Kurt Okreku. He's saying he's going to ensure women's football gets what it deserves. We'll take a break from our sponsors. When we come back, Hot Issues continues. Welcome back. This is Hot Issues on TV3. We're here every Saturday at 12.30 noon. We're speaking with the newly elected Ghana Football Association President, Kurt Okweku, discussing football matters. Mr. Okweku, I have a simple question for you. Okay. Who is lobbying you for the position of Vice President of the GFA? <laughs> I'm sure you're a good self. Do you think I or have you, what it is? Or takes? you're not interested? No. At least to preach the ladies no, gospel? I, 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 because I don't think uh, my competence is in football. Oh, I see. Yes. So okay. Um, on a more serious note, I think that um, um, after our elections, we have the mandate to ensure that we pick up the vice, the second man in command. And um, this will be doing in the next few days. Mm. Um, it's very normal for people to, to lobby lobbying is legal it's not illegal so if somebody speaks are you them, admitting that someone is lobbying you everybody on the committee are, are on a council are my friends and we speak we speak among ourselves when so you speak if you decide to call that lobbying it's up to you well it depends on the, the direction the conversation takes we speak we football you speak football. Yeah, Do you yeah. speak about the possibility of them becoming vice president? No, no. We speak football. I've right. tried to avoid that conversation. So you think it's okay for anyone to lobby for the position? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lobbying is not illegal. It's not illegal? It's not illegal. Are you being lobbied? No. Who do you think best qualifies to become I, vice president? I, I will not even allow you to, to, to finish your question. Um, I think that um, everybody on the council uh, has something to offer. Mm. Um, we are all there to serve the sport. Fortunate for us, all of us have one vote each. Mm. I believe that everybody is qualified. Um, at the end of the day, the people must speak. And this is so important to me. What are the character traits of the person you would be looking for to be the vice president? Somebody who understands the game of football. Somebody who understands the business of football. Somebody who embraces... Um, uh, the the ideas and uh, philosophies that I I want to preach. Somebody who would uh, be very very passionate, like my good self. For me, that's that's enough. That you want to preach. What if the person has their own opinions? 
Well, I think that I've won an election based on, on, on a manifesto, and this manifesto will be the basics for our engagement. Um, indeed, um, we would have to collectively also look at improving or adding quality to the manifesto. So everybody's opinion will be taken at, at our meetings and uh, to ensure that we produce a working document that indeed will ignite passion and create work for everybody. You are, the, you are the president of the GFA. Does it worry you that you do not have the mandate to choose your vice president? Not at all. I'm a, I'm a very good team player. Um, I will make input. I have a vote. And for me, that's very key. I'm, I'm the kind of person who would want to bring everybody along. So, yes, I would speak to everybody. Um, we will discuss the issues, including the, the topic we're discussing. And I'm sure that at the end of the day, we will find wisdom in what we, we discuss. Yeah, but given that you, you want someone who would preach what you want to preach, wouldn't you wish that you could just pick someone to be the First of all, I expect every member of the council to preach what I want to preach, mm. okay? This is so important. Um, it's not possible for the president to be preaching um, in one direction and other council members going in the, in the opposite direction. This is not possible and this is not acceptable. Uh, but I will bring everybody along. I will want to convince everybody why we must go in, in a certain direction. And I think that we'll have a good working team. You're very good friends with the former GFA president, Kwesi Nyantichi. Will you be consulting him at any point? I think that beyond, before Kwesi Nyantichi uh, came into office, uh, we had, uh, we've had 23 other uh, FA presidents. Uh, some are, are gone, some are alive. I would consult everybody. Will you be consulting Kwesi Nyantichi? I would be consulting everybody. Him I think that, that, that question is clearly answered. Nyantichi belongs to one of the 23 who have occupied that high office before. Mm. Many Ghanaians are disenchanted by the Black Stars, me inclusive. How do you intend to revive that local home excitement? I think that I think that it's a, it's one of the challenges that confronts uh, us. Um, what I will plead to everybody is that we have a new opportunity to do things that they believed we didn't get right. Uh, we have new leadership. We have to give this new leadership the opportunity to to do things our way. Um, clearly, I'm very passionate about the sport. It's important that we roll out the right policies that will bring energy in the system, not only in the people who consume the sport, but also in our players. It's important that people wake up in the morning thinking Ghana. And we're not talking only about the Blasters. We are talking about all our seven national teams, be it from the U17, male, female, across board. There have been some concerns that government usually has a bit too much influence in football. What do you think about government interference in football administration? I've, I, have, I, have, I have said on various platforms mm. that it's important that the Football Association, be it here in Ghana, in Germany, in England, in Spain, do have a clear working relationship with the government. This is important. It's mm. even very important in our part of the world, okay, uh, where where we depend on government to fund, especially national team engagement. I remember in 2004, 2005, the Argentine FA went into crisis. They had no money. Uh, there was no sponsorship. The only partnership they had was the TV rights, okay? And then they engaged government. Government invested in the TV rights. And, and the FA and the clubs and all the stakeholders had four times the quantum of money that they had. Okay, this is being clever. And I'm saying that this can only happen if you have a good working relationship with government. Government knows that they have a role to play. We know that we have a role to play. But when someone it, is it, financing you to a certain degree, sometimes their decisions can be paramount. Look, governments finance football everywhere in the world. Everywhere. The level of finance differs. Okay, so it's all about engagement. And I think that we'll cross the bridge. Um, I'm very, very clear in my mind where we want to take our sport. I'm very, very clear in my mind the kind of relationship we need to have with government. Government is a key partner. Let's get this straight, okay? 
but we know that there are clear lines of engagement and we, 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 would, we would work together. People are concerned about um, what they call a mafia in the GFA. Mafia? Yes. Okay. Uh, people, specific people who own the power and decide what happens. What do you think about this? I have no idea about mafia. There's no mafia in the I'm, GFA? I'm yet to experience the work of the mafia. You think there's no... Perhaps I'm the biggest mafia. No. Okay. Perhaps. Okay. Yes, perhaps. Okay. Does that mean you endorse the mafia in the GFA? No, I'm saying that I'm not aware of, of the existence You're of any unaware. mafia. I, I'm aware that there are people who love the game mm. to varied degrees. I know that there are people who are very passionate about the game, who want to see the game improve to the desired levels that we see on our, our screens. Um, people apply their passion differently in varied ways. So I can't fall I can't fault anybody from being over passionate about, about the sport. But I don't I don't know of the existence of any mafia, so to say. For you, what are the major things that will change about Ghana football? At the moment we've we've all lost the passion. We want to bring back the passion. Let's look at your first hundred days in office. What should we expect? I have four years to be in office. First hundred days. Everybody, must Everybody be patient. Everybody keenly looks at um, the first hundred days. I think days. I think what we have we have done is to is to go into a a period of engagement. This is key. Uh, we've come outside the main lines of, of, of management and we want to engage everybody to ensure that we have a clear picture as to what is really real. And I'm using my words here carefully. We want to know what is really real, okay? And, 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 and then we can be able to speak to all issues. Five weeks ago, you mentioned during um in the, in the run-up to the elections, that what Amanda Clinton had to offer was beauty and elegance. No, I mean, uh, don't place premium on that. I was just... I was just uh, Do you think that was a sexist comment? No. I mean, if you place too much premium on it, then, of course, you want to think that way. Um, but I was... I was... I tried to create an, an environment where everybody will be up to speed to what I was talking but about. But do you think it, your, uh, your think comments might have been stereotypical? No, no. I think that um, she, she herself didn't read too much into it because she knows that I mean well. Um, um, on the day I was sworn in, I, I spoke highly of her. Um, she's the only woman in the whole of Ghana to have been part of that process. I mean, um, yes, she didn't do well but i think she has something to she offer she says she's ready to serve will you be drawing her yeah i'm going your... to call her after the show to be honest do you have a specific role on the team for her i'm still thinking about it but, but she has a role to play she's a woman she's a lawyer she's she's knowledgeable and she has a role to play no doubt you think she'll be an asset to ghana football yes she will be Thank i think you. that i think that she will learn very fast and uh, she will soon become a football person she is not a football person now she said it herself I didn't say it. Thank you very much, Mr. Kweku. You're it's most been an welcome. honor hosting you. Most welcome. You have been watching Hot Issues on TV3, and we have been speaking with the newly elected GFA president, Kurt Okweku. We hope most of your questions concerning football in Ghana have been answered. Join us again, same time next week on TV3. My name is Nuong Falong. Good afternoon.